Hello. Would you like to know how to make something like this with Java in processing? What is it? It's a cube of cubes. The colors depend on where in the larger cube the smaller cubes are. And they're rotating. And they're changing sizes. Let's work our way up to this. We'll start with a simple program. We'll set the size of the window and turn on 3D mode. We'll create a draw method where we will make the background black. If I run this, this is what we have so far. Okay, let's add more. Let's put a cube in there. Now we have a cube, but it's not at the center and it's up at the top left. So let's make a little change so that we're moving the origin to the center. And we can do that with a translate. We move halfway over on the x-axis and halfway down on the y-axis. And for the moment, we'll leave the, we won't move on the z-axis. Now when we run, we have a box in the middle of the screen. Okay, let's make more boxes. We need to make a loop. And we will, uh, first, I think we need to decide on how far apart, uh, not how far apart, but how far from the center we want the boxes to start drawing. And so you can experiment with different values, but I'm going to create this constant here called the maximum offset, off max make that 300. And we'll use that in the loops. So the x offset, x o, not 0, starts at negative off max. So it starts at minus 300. So 300 pixels to the left of the center point on the x-axis. And we keep looping as long as x o is less than or equal to the positive off max. And then we'll space the boxes 50 pixels apart. Okay, now in here, inside this loop, we're going to do another translation. And to keep the translations from interfering with each other, we have to do something called push matrix and pop matrix. That saves and restores the transformation matrix. And now we'll do another transformation to shift from the center to possibly left or right of center, depending on x, o. And here, translate at x, y, z. And right now we're interested in x, so we're going to shift it left to right depending on what x, o is equal to. Um, okay, if I haven't made any mistakes, this should give us a kind of a line of cubes. Good. Now, can you think of how you would extend this to create a plane of cubes? I think we need to do something like this. Put a loop inside the loop. Change these x's to y's. And modify the translate, so now we also translate on the y-axis. Okay, good. Uh, now to make it more interesting, let's get the thing spinning a little bit. So we will put a rotation here. We'll do... 
We'll rotate on the y-axis first. And we're going to rotate um, over time. And there's a variable called frame count that starts at 0 or 1 and just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And if we take a fraction of that, that gives us values appropriate for what rotate y expects, which is radians. OK, so let's see. Good. That whole thing is spinning. And how would you make this go faster or slower? You would change this multiplier here. Um, OK, now how about if we have the individual small cubes rotate? How can we do that? Well, let's put a rotate in here. And just to make it more interesting, we'll go at a different speed. OK, so the whole thing is rotating, and the cubes themselves are rotating. Uh, what's left to do? The z-axis. Let's do that. You saw me add the y-axis. Let's do it this way. No. Z. And what do we do here? The Z offset. OK. Oh, boy, look at that. It's a little close to us. Let's push the whole thing back. Well, what, uh, what transformation did we use at the global level, affecting everything? This translate. So if we want to push this back. Let's push it back by um, the offset max, which is 300. So that'll push it away from us 300 pixels, make it, make it a little bit smaller. OK, good. Um, let's do the rest of the rotation. We'll do x and z. And down here, the same. X, Y, and Z. We'll run. OK, great. Now we'll do the color. To do the color, um, we've got to think about that a little bit, because we, the color is um, a function of where in the cube it is on the X, Y, and Z. Um, so we will have x control how much red, y control how much green, and z control how much blue. Um, and we're going to need to write a little function, I think, to calculate the color number, the, the how much red, green, or blue, based on the, the offset. So let's create a, a function or method here called color from offset and then we'll give it the integer offset and I'll show you a little spreadsheet here for what we have to do these offsets the way we're set now range from minus 300 to plus 300 um, and what we're trying to produce is color values that range from 0 to 255 so we need some kind of formula that maps this range, minus 300 to plus 300, into this range, 0 to 255. So um, the, I'll show you the formula in the spreadsheet, if you, if you like spreadsheets and you want to read that real quick. Um, and I'll show it to you in the code now. We're going to return, after converting it into an integer, We're going to take this offset, and we're going to add offset max to it. We, we don't want to have negative numbers in here. So if we add offset max, then a minus 300 would become a 0. 
And then we um, divide that by the, the whole range, which is 2 times the offset max. And then multiply it by 255. Okay, so this does what the spreadsheet does. Takes numbers in the range of minus 300 to plus 300, or uh, minus off max to plus off max, and um, maps them onto 0 to 255, which are the color values that we want. Now that we've written this method, we can call it right before we draw the box. We'll do fill, and then we'll call this color from offset, and then we'll use XO. And maybe just to see this work, I'll put zeros for the other values. Ah, okay. So now it's just going through shades of red. And we'll do the same for the green and the blue. Okay, good. There are the colors. That's kind of cool. The blue shifts on one axis. Same with red and green. Uh, the last thing is to compute the size. And the size is going to vary. It's going to kind of go in a, if you know, sinusoidal um, pattern. Um, kind of like, you know, bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller. And there's a math function that will help with that. And we're going to use that. So um, I'm going to copy and paste something just to save time. And then I'll explain at least some of it here. Okay. So we are taking the, uh, we're dividing the frame count by 20 to just kind of slow things down a little bit. And we're taking the sign of that. And the sign will give us a number between minus 1 and plus 1. Um, which is very convenient because if we multiply that by 15, then we get something from minus 15 to plus 15. And then we add 20 to that. So those are the sizes of those boxes. The smallest is 20 minus 15, or 5. And the largest is 20 plus 15, or 35. Let's see if that works as we expect it. There we go. The sizes are shifting. Okay, I will um, put this code on my GitHub account and put a, put a link to it in the notes. I hope you enjoyed this. So long.